We at Indiana Warm Floors want to be your professionals in the radiant floor heat industry. The green aspect shows up because it is so very energy efficient, easy to control, and very warm. Oh, it's pretty impressive to look out there and see all those red tubes. Wow. <laughs> it's like, that's a lot of... That's a lot of tubing. This room's approximately 13,000 square feet. We split it up into four zones so that uh, one that allows us to not have a real big hot spot because of one big manifold, but it also gives him the ability to turn off sections or turn back sections that he won't be working in that day, and that helps promote efficiency. This main room has four manifolds in it. We want to have access to them but we, they don't have any controls. All the circuits are of equal length at 250 linear feet. This is the Wesson Weiler farm again. This is the mechanical room. This is the wall where all the primary and secondary pump controls and, and boiler will be located. So we're doing some final adjustments here on the manifold system that'll be going into the Weiler project later this week. This is the uh, crown boiler. It's a 425 kbtu uh, ModCon boiler. This is a PERT tubing from Oil Creek. We're using that on this application for thermostat conduit going out to the large zones. So they're ran in the slab as the crow flies, and you can kind of, uh, it makes it a lot easier for us on insulation. The red pipe here is an oxygen barrier PET crosslink PET polyethylene. It's a PEX. Uh, this particular pipe is a Giacconi pipe out of Italy, supplied by Legend. On the south end of this building, what we try to do is always keep our sub-manifolds on interior walls. You can imagine with that concentration of BTUs how much energy you can lose outside. So in this application, to avoid that exterior wall, we put one in just inside this office wall. All these sub-manifolds are in wall cavities here. So the importance of that is you can get benches and so forth completely flat against the wall without any obstruction sticking out. One of the biggest decisions to be made during the design phase of an agricultural uh, radiant building is the distance to the exterior wall that you lay your first tube. The closer the tube, the more energy is gonna leak out outside the building, even with proper slab edge isolation and extra heavy uh, insulation around the perimeter. We coach the customer to put the tubing as far away from that interior wall as possible. We also take into use of space considerations. For instance, if uh, this particular building is going to have some pallet racking along this wall, so we elected to stay two foot from the interior wall. One of the things you want to keep in mind when you're doing a radiant system is um, isolating the edge of the slab from the exterior uh, cold BTUs. We call this slab edge isolation. And the bulk of the loss on a radiant floor structure is around the perimeter. So we try to concentrate our insulation and maybe uh, get a little thicker. This slab edge foam right here goes down approximately two feet to help keep the BTUs from migrating into the uh, rat wall. One of the important things in the, in the design aspect of a radiant floor heat building is drainage. Um, the vehicles will melt off if you bring a wet vehicle in. The little trench drains are ideal for getting uh, large volumes of water out of, out of a structure quickly. If you can get rid of the water, uh, that's optimum. Also in this structure, what you might notice over here is what we refer to as a tie point. But these tie points are uh, an excellent uh, option to put into your structure. Essentially, there's a cap on here and a ring and you can hook a chain on it and use it to anchor down equipment that you're working on. Good morning, Michael. Oh, hey, good morning. How are you doing this morning? Good. Good day, good morning, concrete. Do the whole floor in there, 160 by 84 in one setting. Does a real good job for us, gets in here when we need him. This is where you want the really experienced guys doing the job. protected during the pour, we do put 100 PSI on it, so in the event that you do have a strike during pour, it'll, they'll know it. A Weiler's pour here, it's about 10 o'clock, a little after 10, they start at 7. They get about 13,000 square feet in and uh, before noon. I'm ready for lunch. The next step for Shelter Craft and Indiana Warm Floors is setting the boilers and filling the system. 
we'll uh, look forward to coming back and getting the boiler in as soon as possible. I'm Scott Patton, owner of Indiana Warm Floors and Shelter Craft Supply, and we're proud to be involved in the radiant floor heat industry since 1979, and we hope to earn your business.